Welcome to a very special episode of the Aaron Chase Show. I am here with my very first interview guest, and there is nobody else that I would rather have as my first guest on the show, and that is the one and only, the queen, Mary Hunt, and she is here with us to talk about intentional finances and being intentional with our money don't stop listening now. I know, you know, I, sometimes when I think about money, I'm like, oh, I don't want to think about money or I don't want to do money or I don't want to have to plan anything or I don't want to have to budget, you know, all those things. And so we're going to hear from Mary who has so many amazing ideas and things to share with us today. So Mary, welcome. Thank you, Erin. What an exciting time. I have followed you for years, not nearly as many years as I've been followed, <laughs> but this is just wonderful. I'm so happy to meet you in person. Yes, it's such a gift that we are here together and we get to share with everybody today. And I, I'd love to hear a little bit about Debt Proof Living and Everyday Cheapskate and how all that kind of got started and what you are on a mission now doing. It's such a long story, but I will wrap it up really fast. I'll try to. You know, I fell into the back door of what I do. I never in a million years dreamed that I would ever have a career like this. I got into horrible, terrible, worse than awful money problems, debt. During the first 12 years of my marriage, I went absolutely nuts. It was the craziest thing ever. And by the end of 12 years, my life was really in shambles because you can't run up more than $100,000 in credit card debt against your husband's wishes, a lot of it unknown to him at the time, and live that kind of a secret life. And during the 12 years, you know, we, we bought a home, we had two baby boys. It was terrible. Came to the end of 12 years and it was, we were ready to lose everything. Uh, both of us were unemployed. That's a whole nother story. But I just came to the end of myself. I knew I could not go on like this and I had no more hope. I was out of hope. And I had a real spiritual experience there. And I, I, where do you turn when there's nowhere to turn? And it took me that much pain to realize I needed to, to look up and to realize that, that what I had done was so terrible and ask God for forgiveness. It's a horrible feeling to be out of hope. And I know people listening to me right now feeling that way. We are going through tough, tough times. So it was, it was through that experience that I realized that I could only change as God changed through me. So that was a real turning point. That, that point marks the, the difference between the before and after in my life. It's like a line that will always be there. And so it's a real long story, but the, for the next 10 years, 10 years, a full decade from 1982 to 1992, we secretly, no one knew. It was the most horrible thing. My husband and I, we worked our way out of debt. At the end of 10 years, we still owed $12,000 on that horrible balance, but that was a lot of money to pay back, but it was a miracle. You know, God didn't pay it back. He didn't dump a hundred grand on my front porch, but he brought us the opportunities. And so it was in 1992 that I, uh, I, I got this urge. I wanted to share it with people what had happened and how we did this and how silly, stupid, easy it became. I mean, it was hard, but it was doable. And with each step, it was joyful. It was the most wonderful, joyful journey ever. And I don't know how else to say it. And so I started writing this funny newsletter called Cheapskate Monthly. That's what it was called at first. And there was no internet. It was all done on a typewriter to start with. I graduated to a computer and oh my goodness, that made a big difference. And so we've made that journey and took three more years to get completely out of debt. It took another 10 years to pay off our mortgage. We have no debt. And through those years, it's, it's longer than 28 years now that I've been doing this. The name of Cheapskate Monthly, we did change that to Debt Proof Living because this is more than just being cheap. <laughs> that has a lot to do with it, managing money, doing it wisely. So that, that has changed and uh, so many things have happened. We've attracted over a quarter million subscribers over the years. Who knows how many readers much of what I do now is free and open to the public. The blog, Everyday Cheapskate, has really taken off. And that has become a new, a new outlet, a new area of influence and all. So it's wonderful to be out of debt, to be debt-free, to have known the terrible, terrible pit of the before, 
comparing now to the after it's it's wonderful and i until the day i die i hope that i don't lose the passion i have to help people realize how important that is you can do it anyone can can experience this it takes a plan and i think we'll probably talk about that but that's kind of where it is wow what an amazing testimony and gift that you are giving to millions of people really over the years and I just can't thank you enough for sharing that with us and for inspiring me and, you know, and, and everybody listening. So I think about the finance journey, a personal finance journey as probably three phases in general. You're in debt and you got to get out, which a lot of us find ourselves in for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, in, in, in early in your marriage, it was, you know, maybe frivolous spending and just not great spending habits. And then other times it's like an emergency. Um, that, that comes up, whatever that may be. And then there's, you know, paying the mortgage off and kind of getting yourself in a financial freedom situation. And then there's wealth building, legacy building, right? So I, that's how I think of, of personal finance journey. And so I think a lot of my friends and my audience are in those first two phases. So I'd love to kind of dial in onto, into there and, and possibly maybe speak a little bit more to the planning and maybe the mindset of getting the getting out of debt part, because we've been in debt years ago. And, and when we moved, we accumulated a little bit of debt when we moved into San Antonio seven years ago, but got out of that. And I, I just would love to dig into, even if it's a small amount, maybe, you know, under $10,000, let's say, and um, speak into what does that look like? On the Aaron Chase Show, it's a lot about your thinking and your feeling, and we'll get into all that in, in a little bit, but what is, what is a thought maybe, a couple of thoughts that we could grab onto when we're one in that place of hope where we want to, we know we're gonna do better and, and we want to do better, but then we slip. Let's talk about that kind of thought first and then we'll get into, a little bit into the planning. The first thing I wanna talk about is that there's, there's a huge myth I call it a myth. I believed it for so so long. You know, even if we have a, a five hundred dollars of debt, like there was a great great sale at Nordstrom, and you know, and then you wanted to take the kids to the zoo, and you just didn't have. So it's that small small amount of debt. I mean, it's like anything. You don't. I don't know a soul who started out in ten thousand in debt. We start out small. The second thing is is that usually, and believe me, I've heard from thousands of people, the way we get into debt is seems honorable. I have an emergency. Mm. My washing machine died. I had to get a new one. I didn't have, so I put it on payments. I put it on a credit card and it's so innocent. You know, it's like the world tricks us. It's like sin that enters our lives. It starts out so beautiful and it, 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 it grabs us and it grabbed me. And I had, Terrible, terrible thoughts, and I'm gonna cry because it's, no. it's still so raw. Is it? I, I honestly didn't believe that God knew about my needs or cared about my wants. It's true. I had to take care of myself. Obviously, I didn't trust my husband in either, and so it was on me. And I, I tell you that there is a terrible line that we cross that first time ever when we can't pay the balance in full in a single month, and we slip into the trap. And it's called the minimum monthly payment. Just one time. I'm just going to do it one time. Mm. I don't have the money now, but by some miracle, I'll have it next month. And those cute shoes, I just can't pass it up. And, and, and all of that. And it's a terrible thing. And I want people to know that once it starts going, we get a lie told into our minds. And it says this, I've got to get out of debt. I've got to get out. i got to throw everything at it. i just got to get out of debt. Well, guess what? Life goes on and there's going to be another emergency. And there's going to be another sale. And there's going to be, and it piles up and it begins to multiply. And I'll tell you what, we just come through and we're coming through something horrible in our world called a pandemic. And there are so many parallels there. <laughs> it started with one little cell, a little molecule. So out of this, what I want people to know, Erin, this is the most important thing. If I never, ever leave any other thought in a person's mind, you don't get out of debt by starting getting out of debt. No. You start by saving, even if you are in debt. Because until you have at least a small nest egg put aside, you will never get out of debt because life is going to continue on. And I tried, believe me, 12 years, 
You think I was just having fun? No, I was trying to save my life and make sure my husband never found out what I had done. So here's the secret. You don't start by getting out of debt. You start by building a contingency fund. That's what I call it. And anybody can do this because you can start with $1, okay? That is good. That is okay. You start with $1. And next week you make it 10. And you keep making that minimum payment on your credit cards. You keep them all active and you keep them all up to date. You're not going to fall behind. But instead of sending that extra $25 to Visa, because it seems so honorable, you know, that's what we've always been heard. You've got to pay more than the minimum payment. No, not if you do not have your contingency fund first. Here's the, bon the bonus. This, this is the best part ever. Saving is addictive. I'm telling you, no matter how deeply in debt you are, no matter how hopeless you feel, if you can save $50 cash, you don't even have to put it in a savings account, but diligently put it away, put that away. It does something to your mind. It makes you willing to be frugal. It makes you willing to not go to that sale. It makes you stop feeling sorry for yourself. It makes you all of these things. It's like magic. It really is. And once you get to 100, you go open a savings account at the credit union or at the savings bank or wherever you have your money. You've got to get it out of your possession. You keep doing this. And I'm telling you, it is like an absolute miracle. So the way that you get out of debt is you first begin to save. Something happens. It's a beautiful thing. I could tell you thousands of people who have proven me right in this. And now guess what? They're totally out of debt. So that's how to, to get onto the right path gradually. And this is what I teach in my book, Debt Proof Living. It's all about the contingency fund. Because once you have it, and I teach you at what point then are you able to start really hitting on the, the getting the debt taken care of. But one step at a time, it will work. And so that is kind of the planning. <laughs> it's probably not what you thought it would be to get out of debt. You have to start saving. But that is exactly it. But it makes sense because that is the plan, but it comes from your thinking, right? And the Absolutely. thinking of get, I got to get out of debt. I got to get out of debt. Just like you said that shifting complete shift. Cause I got to get out of debt is a negative yes. thought pattern, right? Exactly. And switching it's, that to, I need to save $10. Like you're now telling your money a positive thing to do, right? And so that's like, that's a full on mindset shift. Yes. And then the result is, it, it is in your plan of the contingency savings fund and then going, you know, from there. That's let me, let me beautiful. Offer a parallel. And this is something that I've never, ever said on an interview in the public like this ever. And this is absolutely true. Getting out of debt is so much like losing weight. Getting into debt is like putting on weight. And guess what happened to me over those 12 years? I ballooned. I mean, I always had, I've always had uh, a weight problem. Uh, my mother mentioned this to me when I was in the fifth grade killed me, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I've always, I'm, I'm very short stature and I, I gained a tremendous amount of weight over those 12 years. And I paid back more than hundred thousand dollars in debt. My husband and I together. Well, guess what happened? I lost over a hundred pounds as well. In fact, my debt and my debt and my weight are so much the same, about 115 each. And I've lost that weight and some of the very, very same principles. When you're overweight, the first, the only thing you can ever think about is I'm never going to eat again. I'm never going to eat again. I will never eat again. <laughs> and then you wait, well, no, I'm never ever going to eat bread again. Oh, I'm never going to eat chocolate again. That's how we think. And we say that until the next time. And it's the same with the debt. And so many, many of those principles have applied. And I am, I am just absolutely so grateful. I think you're 100% correct on that analogy. And I've actually had that thought before of how, you know, when you're, when you're on a weight loss journey, there's, you have to watch what you're eating, what you're putting in, and you have to watch what you're, I don't want to say putting out, but exercising, right? It's both. If you want to be successful on that path, you're going to have to be aggressive in both of those areas will apply the same thing to money and you've got to be aggressive with what you're saving 
and then you've got to be aggressive with how you're paying down on the debt, right? It's a, it's a great, great analogy in parallel. I can take one step further. I won't stay on this forever, but contingency fund, the saving, the having something in reserve, the way that translates to me with weight is having lost weight. I lost 10 pounds. That puts you into a new mindset that I can do this. This feels fantastic. What's working? I'm willing to take it off one pound at a time. I'm not going to lose it all in a month. I've got a plan. I'm becoming accountable. It's so much the same. So let's wrap this. We have a new mindset of shifting from the negative. I've stuck and I'm stuck in debt and I got to pay it off too. Let me save and to pay back kind of in parallel. And what would be one thing we could do just mentally and, and mindset wise when we get stuck in we've made we fell for the Nordstrom sale or we you know we decided oh that was enough savings off of the MSRP or the retail price for that new cardigan right like what what can we do when we do slip to get back on track I think of it as this way I'm driving through a neighborhood and there's sometimes I'm at a party and there's cars parked along the side and it's a tight fit and I miss and I hit one car I don't keep going and hit every single one thinking, wow, I hit one. I might as well hit them all now. No, you stop. You have to stop. You have to become accountable. You have to admit to it. And, and I'm telling you, I kind of take the scorched earth tactic here. You take that thing back to the store. You don't get to keep it. You didn't pay for it. You put it on credit. And so you have to make amends in that way. The same as you don't, don't keep chocolate in your house if you're trying to lose weight and chocolate your weakness. You can't handle those credit cards if you're not able to pay them all off in a single month, okay? So you've got to put them away. I wouldn't suggest cut them up or close the accounts. I used to, but we don't do that anymore because things have gotten complicated. But get them out of your wallet. Don't carry them with you. For goodness sakes, if you don't have money to spend, don't be cruising around Amazon. Don't just go looking at those cute shoes and all that. You have to start parenting yourself. You have to do that. And when you make a mistake, you make amends as quickly as you can. If it can't be returned, you're going to have to give something else up until that has been brought current. This is not rocket science. I mean, if you're a parent, if, if you are a, a supervisor, if you have a job where you're in charge of people, this stuff is pretty easy. We don't want to believe it. We don't want to think about it, but that's what has to happen. Until you can get out of debt, no more new debt, no more new purchases. That's how it is. I love that, to take it back. Like, it's so simple, but it's the thing we wanted or it's the thing we've been watching or that we knew we, you know, we think we need, right? I think that's another trap uh -huh. that we can get into. And that's one of the things with my, my kids. It's you don't really need that. You want that. <laughs> like, you need new underwear. You don't, you know, need you know, new LED lights for your room or whatever it is. And so those are, those are tough lessons, even for adults. I want your listeners and your readers, my readers, anyone who's listening to this, to know that I'm still who I was. I am very impulsive. And I'll tell you, to this day, I still have to do self-talk. I have a little diagram. I call it my flow chart. It's on, it's on my blog. It's everywhere. If people want to look for it. But it, I used to have it taped to the front of the checkbook because that was the instrument that I used a lot. But do I need it? <laughs> That's the very first thing. <laughs> if it's no, you go over here and then save myself from a stupid purchase. If it's yes, then I have to go through all these other little steps. And you cannot believe how many times I have stopped myself short. You know, oh, yeah, I want it. Yes, I need it. But I already have something I will do just as well. Deal done. Save myself from a stupid purchase. So, you know, if, if we're going to talk about feelings too, sometimes we just have to get rid of those feelings. No, you don't deserve it. No, just because your friends have it. No, just because you got invited. We have to get rid of the feelings. Stop feeling poor. Stop feeling, you know, entitled. Stop feeling those things that have become so negative. Right. I love that. And I think when you do a mindset shift from a negative, we talk about how, how, when, how we think about something can change the way we feel about it. And that's, that's, a, that's a process and a journey. There's a lot of back and forth that happens with your thinking and, and your feelings. And then, you know, throw in yeah. our current, you know, pandemic situation and everything's all <laughs> crazy. But 
the I think that when you flip from negative thoughts to, to positive thoughts, then you start to feel accomplished because I'm actually saving money or you start to feel more prudent and wise in your spending. Even if you do fall off track, you know, you set up these accountability things for yourself, your, your chart, which I will totally link to because I think that everybody needs that, whether you're in debt or out of debt, it's just smart for wherever you are in your journey. And I want to use it for my kids too. So having, building in those little accountability touch points, I think is extremely important for us as we're on this journey. And as we're having to make both big decisions big financial decisions and the micro ones, the day-to-day ones, because if, you know, if you want to find a thousand dollars in your budget, there's lots of places you can look for that, but it comes down to having to make the micro decisions every single day or every single week, depending on what particular line item you're looking at. There's one thing I want to add. The wonderful thing about a contingency fund is how it changes you. When you get that up to 200, 250, maybe $500. Something comes along that in your previous way of thinking, you would have thought, oh, it's an emergency. I have to do that. I have to spend the money. I, I need $500 right now. It changes everything because all of a sudden you don't want to touch that money. It came with a lot of diligence, a lot of discipline. And so you find yourself doing anything to not spend it. We'll repair the washing machine. We'll get through. We will find another way. We will go to the thrift store instead of having to get shoes at this store. Well, whatever it is, you can't believe it's such such a wonderful tool in your life. And, And I also want to add real, real quickly that in these last four or five months, I have heard from literally thousands of people, honestly, it's the most wonderful thing ever, who have written to me and said, you know what? I didn't really understand when you said we have to have six months of living expenses put away. Six months, that's a half year's income. I mean, think of it that way. Just in case things happen. We get separated from our income. We blah, blah, blah. There's so many things. But now I know. We hit this pandemic and just have gone through. We haven't missed a beat. Lost my job, but guess what? We are way ahead anyway. We got that stimulus thing. We have our contingency fund. You can't believe how many people have told me we haven't touched it. We haven't touched it. We have found a way to get through. And I'm just going, oh, this is fantastic because that's the way it's supposed to work. And guess what? Those are the happy people. Those are not the people. And I say this with all the love in my heart, but astonishment who after just one week were in line at food banks with their brand new SUVs. I mean, it was a tragic thing. I'm telling you. Americans live from one paycheck to the next, no matter how much money they make. Most of them do. They're so deeply in debt. They don't own that SUV or that big fancy car that they're going to a food pantry to get enough food to have dinner tonight. So uh, we've proven this method. The debt-proof living method is a complete method based on five elements of debt-proof living. They're simple. They have worked for thousands of people. I couldn't be more grateful. And I could not be more grateful for you sharing this with us and being such an inspiration and encouragement. And you have heard Mary speak about, you know, planning and implementing and setting up your contingency fund and setting in some accountability touch points for yourself. And we're going to include all of that in the show notes for sure. I want to thank you for being here with me today. Where is the best place for us to get started? Where should we go first and how do we get connected with you and your amazing newsletter and content? We are in a little bit of a transition here at Debt Proof Living. So the Debt Proof Living site is still a membership site and it is very old and it is being reworked and we are getting ready to launch our new Debt Proof Living site. We are going to go from a complete membership model to a free model. We are. Love now, it. there's going to be an upgrade option there as well. But I would invite people to come to debtproofliving.com. You'll never see an older site in your whole life, but it still works. <laughs> and, and that will get you there now. But it's going to cost you a fee of $39 for one year, a fee that hasn't changed in more than 15 years. But anyway, I, I would suggest that. I would love for you to do that. But that's where if you're ready to get serious, you want to read my book, Debt Proof Living. It is everywhere. It's on Amazon. You can get the Kindle. It's inexpensive. That's our textbook. If you want to come in today, right today, 
and join my family. Come to everydaycheapskate.com. That's my daily blog. Yes, you will hear from me every single day. That's where we're learning to save time and money every single day. And we're a huge community and we are all best friends in the whole world and we love each other. And we would invite you, come, please come there. You'll learn everything you need to know eventually. You have access to me. I may not respond. I get a lot of mail, but you know that I'm there every single day day. I love it. All right, friends, go connect with Mary, join the debt proof living and everyday cheapskate family. You will be blessed. I know in doing that. So again, Mary, thank you for sharing with us today. And I am thrilled for all of the great information that you have gifted us here and have available in your community as well. Thank you, Erin. I can't wait to see you face to face. This is really good, but we've got to meet up soon. We do. We will. We will.